Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu Colored Artifact Sacrifice deck featuring a Jan Janssen a Chaos Crafter as its commander. This deck was suggested by one of my supporters on Patreon. The 3 mana 3-3 three, three legendary Gnome Artificer has haste, can tap to sacrifice an artifact creature, in which case we can make two treasure tokens, or we can sacrifice a non-creature artifact, in which case we make two 1-1 one, one construct artifact creature tokens, and then of course we can also sacrifice the construct later to make more treasures. So our deck is filled with cheap artifacts that we don't mind sacrificing to our commander to then give us that mana boost or board presence in the form of constructs and there's of course a ton of sacrifice and artifact synergies throughout. The first category of split up here is the removal section where at one mana we get to play with sword to plowshares, fatal push and lightning bolt so all the best one mana options. There's also voltage surge can maybe sack an artifact to deal four damage and then in black white d spark and vanishing verse are great too. In red black there's Angras Rampage and Colagans Command to maybe deal with an artifact, make the opponent discard or maybe deal damage to a creature, can choose two different modes. And then at 4 mana Chandra, which I could have also put in the mana acceleration category, but can also deal 4 damage to a creature. And then Doom Foretold also makes a lot of sense here, since we have plenty of cheap permanents that replace themselves or have a nice ETB effect, so we don't mind feeding more stuff to our own Doom Foretold, whereas the opponent will eventually have to sacrifice more valuable permanents. And then a Sky Sovereign deals 3 damage to a creature or planeswalker when it enters or attacks, and we can easily crew it with Yawn. Then the next section includes some cheap artifacts that we don't mind sacrificing to our commander on turn 3 already, and often it's better to sacrifice an artifact creature to Yon, as we'll be able to make those two treasure tokens, as early mana acceleration is very valuable, as opposed to sacrificing a non-creature artifact to make two 1-1 one -one constructs. So at one mana there's a frontliner, which we can sacrifice and then maybe unearth to sacrifice a second time. Esper Sentinel can provide a bit of value early on, but we can also eventually sacrifice it once we're later in the game. And then the Synthesizer can be a nice source of card advantage, so this one's better if we can play it a little bit later in the game, maybe play a land from exile before playing our land for the turn. Then Goldhound, another cheap artifact creature, can also sacrifice it for one mana as it counts as a treasure. Chromatic Star is excellent as it will draw when it's sacrificed, so even if we don't use its ability and sacrifice it to Yon instead, it will still replace itself. And then same with a Terrarion, which also draws when it's put into our graveyard from the battlefield. Then we've got Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, as well as the Servo Schematic, which will make 1-1 one -one Servo Tokens when they enter the battlefield, so we can either sacrifice the artifact itself, or we can sacrifice the creature half of it, depending on what we want to do. And then the Potion of Healing also replaces itself, and then a Virus Beetle, another creature that we don't mind sacrificing, and can also make the opponent discard when it enters. And Icar Wellspring is great too, since it will draw when it enters and when it's put into our graveyard, so we can maybe draw two cards with it. Then the next section includes more mana acceleration, of course we can already make treasures with Yon, so we don't need a whole lot of it, but still playing Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart and Mindstone as early mana artifacts. And then Ornithopter of Paradise, a creature that we can also maybe sacrifice to Yon after making one extra mana with it. And then a Fable of the Mirror Breaker can of course make treasures with the Goblin Shaman, which have great synergy throughout the deck. And of course Fable has a ton more to offer as well. The Pitiless Plunder will make a treasure token whenever another creature we control dies, so also works very well with the 1-1 constructs that we can generate with Yon. There's the Solemn Simulacrum, which will find a basic when it enters the battlefield, and we also don't mind sacrificing it as it will still draw a card. And then a Goldspan Dragon can generate a ton of extra treasure tokens, and those treasures will now make two mana as opposed to one, so also has great synergy across the deck. And then our next category includes some artifact and sacrifice synergies. At two mana we have Dragon Spark Reactor, which will slowly pick up more counters as artifacts enter the battlefield, and with Jan making two artifacts per turn that can quickly add up, and at some point we can sacrifice it, dealing a ton of damage to the opponent and maybe a creature or planeswalker they control as well. There's a Reckless Fire Weaver dealing one damage to the opponent whenever an artifact enters, which will also quickly add up. We've got the Smelter to sacrifice some of our artifacts for one mana to turn them into 3-1 constructs with haste. There's the Hidden Stockpile, which can also repeatedly make 1-1 one -one Servo Artifact Creature Tokens. Oni Cold Anvil is perfect here, as it will repeatedly make Construct Tokens. We've got the Morbid Opportunist, so if we sacrifice a creature to one of our effects, we'll also get to draw a card, can maybe use it both in our turn and the opponent's turn. Braids, another Sacrifice Outlet to draw extra cards. 
We've got the professional face breaker, which can make additional treasures if we manage to hit the opponent. And then we can also use those treasures for a card advantage. So I could have also put this in the card advantage category. And then a Zorn can give us additional treasures whenever we make them. And Mayhem Devil, another great payoff, as we'll be able to deal one damage to any target whenever a player sacrifices any permanent. So great with treasure tokens, with sacrificing creatures in general. And then our next section includes card advantage, where at two mana we have Deadly Dispute, can sacrifice an artifact or creature as an additional cost to draw two cards and make a treasure token. Treasure map we can slowly build up until it transforms into Treasure Cove, and then we'll get to make three treasure tokens as well. Then treasures can be sacrificed to draw a card with a treasure cove. Got Tokasia's Welcome, which will draw whenever a creature with mana value 3 or less enters a battlefield under our control, only once each turn. But once again, we can maybe use Yon during the opponent's turn to trigger the Welcome a second time. Then the Black Market Connections is great if we can get it down early, drawing extra cards, making treasures, and sometimes making shapeshifters, although we'll have to watch out that we don't lose too much life to it. Then the Apprentice can also enter making a Thopter token, so it provides multiple artifacts for us to maybe sacrifice, and the Apprentice itself can also tap Sacrifice an Artifact to maybe exile the top card of our library that we can play until the end of our next turn. Got Scrap Trawler to maybe get back some cheap artifacts if we sacrifice another artifact in play. Got Karn, which can also provide Karn advantage with the plus one and minus one, and make Karn structs with the minus two, which will grow in size the more artifacts we control. Spider Queen, also great in a sacrifice deck, as we'll get more loyalty whenever a creature we control dies, can make menacing spider tokens or draw extra cards. Then a Liliana Dreadhorde General can also make each player sacrifice two creatures, and whenever a creature we control dies, we get to draw. And then Bolas' Citadel is excellent to ramp into, as we now get to play spells off the top of our deck using life instead of mana. Then our next section is kind of the miscellaneous, where we have a few tutor effects, including Oswald Fiddlebender can tap for one white mana and then sacrifice an artifact to search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to one plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value. So we can kind of go up the chain. I made sure to include at least one artifact at each mana cost and often they have some nice ETB effect, so we don't mind sacrificing them afterwards. Then a Diabolic Intent also requires a sacrifice to search up any card in our deck. And then Wishclaw Talisman is also great with Yon as we can activate it and then before giving it back to the opponent we can sacrifice it so the opponent never gains control of the talisman and we still get to search up any card in our deck. Goblin Engineer, when it enters a battlefield, lets us search our library for any artifact card and put it into our graveyard, and for one red mana can tap, sacrifice an artifact to return an artifact card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, so it can also set up some fun recursion loops, especially good with Icor Wellspring, sometimes we'll get our Wishclaw Talisman if we need another tutor effect. And then Magda will make a treasure when it becomes tapped, and we can sacrifice five treasures at any point to search our library for any artifact or dragon card and put it on the battlefield. So it could eventually find our Bolas' Citadel or maybe Goldspan Dragon as well. And then Halo Fountain can pay white mana, tap it to untap a tapped creature we control and make a 1 1 citizen. So perfect for untapping Yon, so we can activate it multiple times in the same turn. And can also maybe draw a card if we untap two tapped creatures. There's Anointed Procession to double all our tokens, so it works with treasure tokens, creature tokens, you name it. Then a Marionette Master, one of our better finishers, as it can enter with three plus one plus one counters, thanks to Fabricate, or maybe three one one servos, but typically better to get to plus one counters, because then whenever an artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, the opponent loses life equal to the master's power. So now all of a sudden if we sacrifice a treasure token, the opponent loses four life, so we can often one hit KO the opponent if we have a big enough board. And then Herald of Anguish we can also play by maybe tapping some of our artifacts in play, so we can ramp it out quite early. And then at the beginning of our end step, each opponent discards a card, so if the opponent's tapped out, we can get immediate value and make the opponent discard. Hopefully they only have one or two cards left in hand, and can also maybe sacrifice an artifact to shrink opposing creatures down, so it can also act as removal. And then our mana base is pretty straightforward, just a ton of mana fixing, but I do want to point out a few of these dual lands. These are artifact lands that enter the battlefield tapped, so they can enable some of our artifact synergies, can also sacrifice them to Yon to potentially make two 1-1 one -one tokens, so those are also very nice to have in this three-color deck. And then just a lot of try lands and other mana fixing to make sure we can cast all our spells in a timely fashion. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the Dragon Engine, so 5 color. Well, we can uh, try and ramp into a Citadel thanks to the treasures from Facebreaker as well. And then Frontliner represents two treasures. Our mana's good, so give this a try. 
So turn one frontliner. Don't have a turn two play lined up, so hopefully we can pick one up. And then turn three, either Facebreaker or Yon. Opponent with a Thought Erasure. So that could just snipe our Citadel right now. Takes Facebreaker instead. Welcome could be nice. So hit for one. And then we'll have to wait and see whether or not we prefer taking a slower approach with a welcome and then player commander. Or maybe get the extra treasures going first. A widespread thieving can eventually cast something for free as well as make some treasures. Smelter. Yeah, I'm tempted to play Tokasia's Welcome since we're also about to miss a land drop. And then we'll hit for one, play on, and sack Frontliner for treasure. Assuming this resolves. It does. Okay, and then Acre Wellspring. We can maybe sacrifice next turn. Although we could just ramp into our Citadel instead. Opponent with a Riveteer's Charm. So, in response, we'll uh, make our treasure. And then we don't really need Yon anymore. Opponent could play a Dragon Engine with an extra land. It's gonna be Jetmir first. Okay. They don't have a whole lot of tokens at least. Heralds. I'm a little bit short of casting. So what's our move? Could get more value from our Tokasia's Welcome by playing, let's say, Smelter and Wellspring. Waiting on Citadel, which I could buy. I think maybe start with uh, Wellspring, see what we pick up, and then maybe sack it to the Smelter. Fatal push. Okay, so if I play Smelter, trigger Welcome, ideally draw lands. There we go. And then move to combat, sacrifice Wellspring to the Smelter, which will enable Revolt for Fatal push, which we can now cast. And take out Jetmir. Okay. And then next turn we can play Citadel. Maybe before playing land in case we can play one of the top. Okay, Tasha. Can potentially shrink down our team if we try and attack the Planeswalker. And they're getting to cast a free Kaya thanks to the hideaway. Okay. Two planeswalkers in one turn is always powerful. Kaya exiles welcome, that's not too surprising. At least we can finish off Kaya with a lightning bolt now. And we won't be attacking with our one toughness creatures, that's for sure. Okay. So if I play Citadel. What's the worst that could happen if we don't get to Lightning Bolt Kaya? They can plus on the Dragon Engine. Could also play Herald of Anguish, which will make the opponent discard their last card. In addition to maybe bolting Kaya and then wait on Citadel. Yeah, that may be better. So play Heralds and then bolt Kaya. Could also bolt Tasha, but we wouldn't be able to deal enough damage to finish it off. Okay. Opponent has to discard. And their last card was a pretty good one. Baladros. So Tasha can keep plussing to eventually minus six. Although now Harold can pressure it. Tainted Indulgence to actually draw two. That's nice. The Thieving's done a lot of work as well. 
And an escape. Not a bad leftover. So they can play at least one more card out. But yeah, as it stands, they'll still have to discard two heralds. And then we can hopefully have a good turn with Bolas' Citadel, which the opponent doesn't have a way of uh, removing, as far as we can tell. They could play Evangel, make a treasure, still play Boots. Evangel draws and discards. Harunus Ultimatum would have been scary. Can be a Paradise Druid for now. Chandra's not bad either, but uh, kind of like Citadel now. And then we'll keep our treasure around. Play a land of the top. Halo Fountain, also not bad. Especially once we get our commander going. Can play Magda, Solemn, sure. Reactor is great, although it's going to be shuffled if we activate Solemn. Yeah, still want the extra land, I think. Make it a mountain. And a Sky Sovereign can finish off Tasha now with a Herald attack. Okay, so I think we're in the driver's seat despite being at 8, so that's the one potential risk here. Herald attacks Tasha. We'll deal 4 to it. And then we still have Halo Fountain available, which we can activate at instant speed to untap Herald if necessary. Their opponent didn't have to discard anything since they ran out to Paradise Root last turn. We'll see what they decide to do. Obscura Charm can return a multicolor permanent with mana value 3 or less. There's not a lot of those. And the air opponent explodes after a great turn with Bolas' Citadel. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing red mana. So this will be a mulligan. This is better, facing Raidan. So that is going to tax some of our spells. But uh, still happy to keep this. Terrarion into Mindstone. Can play on. And then the following turn, Zorn plus Yan can make three treasure. And that will ramp into Liliana nicely. Facebreaker makes more treasure. So we've got some cool synergies. Okay, so Yan seems good. And then sacking Terrarion will also draw us a card. But it does have a fragment reality for one. We get an Ornithopter in return, will make it easier to play on at least. Search for glory, okay. What does our opponent get? Just an Inventor's Fair. So, could replay on. Possible our opponent setting up some sweepers as well. In which case we don't want to add more creatures to the board, but uh, it's not like I have a ton of options with this hand. And at least we can make some treasure. Cosmos Elixir is acceptable. So we'll make two treasure, and next turn maybe three. So can I play Zorn? Play Facebreaker. Attack, make two treasure, sacrifice the 1-1, one, one, make three. That sounds like a pretty good turn. And the Mayhem Devil could be excellent as well. Assuming there's no board wipe. So do we want to do anything else here? Could try and hit my land drop with the face breaker, which we haven't done yet. 
Alright, that's good enough. So I think we just pass it back. Not gonna overextend with a Mayhem Devil. Could get a Liliana in play, which does have the advantage of insulating us against a Sweeper somewhat. Maybe that's worth it. Make a zombie and then if our opponent does wipe the board, at least we'll draw. And if they don't, we can easily make more treasure next turn. Eye of Vecna to draw, that's fine. And a Fateful Absence deals with Liliana. Alright, can we kill our opponent with Mayhem Double this next turn? I would not be surprised. Bolt also helps with that plan. So, attack with everyone but Jan and Ornithopter. Play Devil. Sacrifice Ornithopter for treasure. And then, uh, yeah, use Phase Breaker for now. Spider Queen. That might be worth playing. And then do we just draw, since we have enough of a board? Okay, I guess we can call it a day. Although I guess we haven't hit a, a land drop yet. So could use the face breaker once again. Although I'm unlikely to be able to cast much else that we exile. So I'll pass. Opponent at 15, although can easily deal three more here. And yeah, farewell. So it does not exile planeswalkers at least, and our opponent did not go for artifacts since they want to keep Cosmos Elixir. So yeah, that happens. And Braids can sacrifice creatures to deal the opponent damage. So let's say we make spiders, braids, play frontliner, that's one way to go. Although I wouldn't mind drawing a land either. Right, that works. So braids could also go for a two mana play, like a servo schematic. And I'll hang on to my treasures. Now I guess if I sacrifice Servo, opponent can just sacrifice I since it's an artifact. But that was going to be the case either way. So, yeah. That's okay. Opponent sacrifices I. A gift in exchange for loyalty. We may be able to get to a minus 8 in this game. A restoration. So the game goes on. Removing an artifact also makes Inventor's Fair less of a concern. So a Spider Queen, still interested in drawing, I think. Can we sacrifice three creatures this turn? Would be surprising, especially since Braids happens end of turn. So we'll draw first. Smelter helps. So let's say we wait to play Beetle until our opponent's got one card left, which may or may not happen. And then for now, Smelter, sacrifice the uh, Servo Schematic. Could also go for Yon to start making more treasure. Although it's kind of expensive. Could still play Frontliner, sacrifice it. Sure, let's go for Yon. Braids attacks. And 
And then I'll sacrifice Servo Schematic. Ooh, a Marionette Master, that could end the game. Okay, let's hope to dodge another Sweeper, although if they have a board wipe, then we can minus eight. Opponent does not make it easy. Okay, let's uh, make treasure. Sack a clue. And float a red. That's a setback. Do what I demand. Eater and archives, so points down to one card. And then uh yeah, right down we can take out. Tokasia's welcome's not bad, so this plus beetle, and then we still keep bolt available. Just double checking here. Their last card was a Mind's Eye, good to get rid of. And uh, do I care about killing Raidan? Yeah, I guess I kind of do. Okay, pass it back. And then Citadel could be coming down next turn. Not gonna keep this Bolas Citadel waiting. And then, yeah, maybe find to keep Phyrexian Tower untapped. Play a land of the top, and that's already where things would end. If it weren't for Puzzle not drawing with Tokasia's welcome. Hail of Fountain and a Deadly Dispute. So I can dispute sacking Puzzle Knots. Get through those lanes. Opponent just sacking the Archive to draw to. Alright, I think that's probably the end of the road. Attack with Beetle. And then we can still use Fountain to make an extra token in the opponent's turn to trigger Welcome. So we got our value. Opponent activates Gate. So we survived Farewell. We survived Hour of Revelation. How many more Sweepers that hit various card types can they play? And a Wrath of God, of course. Still want to draw here. Okay, Doom Foretold could be quite effective with our opponent not having any permanence in play. Although I guess they would just let the Doom Foretold sacrifice itself. So ideally they have a few permanents in play. Okay, another land on top. Marionette Master, not quite lethal yet. Uh, so, yeah. Could go for a Doom Foretold or maybe draw first with Smelter or Goldhound entering the battlefield. Okay, Fatal Push on top, not the most useful card. Could always replay Yon. And then start making treasures to set up our Marionette Master. Sure. So that's 9 mana. Does this involve sacrificing Goldhound? I guess it does. So in that case, maybe we wait and just go for Signa Doom Foretold. Get to draw a card in the process. And could play a Smelter too if I want. Sure. Okay. Opponent just discarding Iganjo. And now a Pitiless Plunder on top. Great with our 
Marionette Master. Immortal Sun comes down. That's fine. And a Guardian Idol. So we should have this covered. Raiden. We can Fatal Push here. If we wanna. I'll land up the top. So, do we have lethal? Start with plunder, and then let's say we unearth frontliner. Can always sacrifice it to Frexian Tower as well. Play Chromatic Star. Fireweaver is not bad. Anointed Procession, double our tokens. Oh, yes. Okay, let's move to combat real quick before opponent concedes. Can sacrifice. The Chromatic Star, perhaps. Get double the tokens. Two more damage. Draw. Yeah, opponent concedes. So what could have happened this turn? We attack with everyone, which is already a decent chunk of damage. But then the important part, probably keep Goldhound untapped. Use Frexen Tower to make two mana by sacrificing Frontliner, which will make two treasures with Plunder, since we have our... Anointed Procession in play, that already pings the opponent for a bunch with Fireweaver. And then play Marionette Master, which can then deal a ton more damage, especially if uh, we keep doubling our tokens with Anointed Procession. So yeah, would have been a pretty exciting turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, but we're missing red mana for a turn 2 Fireweaver, and we're missing artifacts for Yon. So let's mulligan. This seems better. Facing Feather, so it can be a very scary deck. And uh, can play turn 1 Esper Sentinel, and then turn 2 maybe Gold Hound as something else I wouldn't mind. Sacrificing to Yon to keep the Sentinel around. Okay, Cold Steel Heart, also decent, and then next turn I can double spell. A Legionnaire, that's a good 2-drop. So we can play Yan and uh, Goldhound, and then uh, sacrifice Goldhound to make treasure. But we'll keep Yan back on defense first. Opponent taps out for Feather. Okay, let's do a potion, draw something useful. Mindstone, not quite. So we'll play Mindstone and then uh, pass with a plan of sacking potion to make a couple 1 ones. Can maybe sacrifice Mindstone to draw as well. Okay, put on trying to take out Yan. They'll have to pay the Sentinel tax, but they did not. So in that case, still uh, make the one once. And now I'm less incentivized to sacrifice Mindstone since I might need it to replay on. Although Welcome First seems better. Gotta start drawing a few more cards. But likely leaving a protection for Feather, which is why they didn't pay the tax. Rampage is a way around protection, but it would just hit the Legionnaire. So we'll pass. And then sacrifice Construct to make treasure, or I can sacrifice treasure to trigger the welcome, making more 1 1s, which I also don't mind. Legionnaire attacks, I'll take it since it can probably increase its power. And then an explosive entry. 
Those who are opponent pay the tax. They don't. Yeah, this explosive entry is going to be a problem since it can repeatedly destroy artifacts. So I guess we'll just sacrifice Sentinel now instead. Anvil, also good starting points. So Rampage, make them sacrifice a creature. Opponent loses Legionnaire. And then, uh, yeah, we want to make sure to trigger Welcome right now and again in the opponent's turn. Blast Defiance in response, sure. So now if we were to draw removal for Feather, we can take out both creatures. So we want to go digging with Tokasia's Welcome. So let's say I sacrifice a uh, Treasure to Deadly Dispute, that would do it. Or I can play Terrarion, sacrifice Terrarion. Herald of Anguish, and a Sky Sovereign. A little bit short of killing Feather, unfortunately, but I could play Heralds for pretty cheap. Okay, and then Jan activates in the opponent's turn to enable Welcome again. So they might try and destroy the Anvil. And then I can sacrifice it in response, make two 1-1s, one -ones, draw a card. Take the hit from Feather. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, I guess we're too far ahead now with Heralds as a way to make them discard and eventually maybe kill Feather as well, especially in combination with Sky Sovereign. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Facing Adlin, so white aggro. So turn to Puzzle Knots, to then have a creature to sack to make treasure. That's usually the more powerful start. And then we've got a lot of great follow-ups. Depending on the situation, I could also play a face breaker, hit for one, make a treasure. Self of Savior. And Kite Sail. Okay, so our opponent's ready to protect their commander here. So now that they have a blocker back, not liking the face breaker line quite as much. So I'll go for Yon. And then I can pass, sank the token in the opponent's turn to make treasure. And maybe block the 1-1 one -one from Adeline if they decide to play it. Okay, next turn we can play a Goldspan Dragon. And then we can maybe combine Talisman with Theon's ability to tutor up whatever we want. Okay, time for gold span. And then we'll have essentially four mana and treasures left over. So let's attack. And then we could play Talisman, play Signets, still activate Talisman and sacrifice it in response. Sure. 
And then the question is what to get with Talisman, since we have our entire deck to choose from. So go full control, activate Talisman. In response, sacrifice it. And what do we get? Marionette Master could be quite effective, but okay. I guess her opponent doesn't want to stick around to find out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Tatsunari, so it's going to be Sultai Enchantments versus Mardu Artifacts. It should be fun. Our hand seems okay. We'll need to draw a third land. And this one comes into play tapped. So probably start with this. And then next turn we can decide between Goldhound or maybe Reactor first. Signet's nice, so now we can play Signet plus Goldhound. And next turn maybe Yon sacrificing Goldhound making treasure. Do miss out on a few counters on the Reactor, but that's okay. Opponent also with Signet, it's only fair. Yeah, let's get this... Uh, Yawn going, and then I can attack for one first. Make some treasure. And then we'll still have Dispute or Rampage available. Could also Rampage the Signet. Might be better to wait. And then keep up Dispute if they try and kill Yawn. And then next turn maybe play Reactor first. One's gonna bounce, that's not too bad. Send it back to hand. And then uh, can play Reactor, play on, and then still make some 1-1s. One -ones. Spell Pierce we can pay for. Just gonna delay our plan somewhat. Does our opponent have a cheap enchantment to make a frog right away? Doesn't seem to be the case. The land is excellent. So play Yan. And then we can sacrifice a treasure, make two one ones, and still kill the opponent's commander. Okay, that was a good turn. Reactor's ticking up. And then next turn we can either get treasure map going, or maybe Karn, or both. Opponent's gonna tutor for something. Could be a Meat Hook Massacre, who knows. Could be some big 6 or 7 mana finisher. So I'm a bit concerned. Can play Doom Foretold, make them sack Signet to at least deny 1 mana. And... Uh, in the meantime, I can make more treasure. Might be better off to keep up Dispute and maybe even the reactor itself. So let's say we play Doom Foretold and then just pass. Signet down. And there's Tatsunari once again. Okay. That I can live with. So I'll sacrifice a token make treasure. Sacking the signet. Second so dispute sacking a treasure at this stage. So we make use of our mana. Draw for turn. And then uh, Karn could start making large constructs. We could uh, keep up the mana for Reactor this time. And then maybe keep uh, Treasure Map available as well. So I'll hang on to the bridge, even though it gets an extra counter on Reactor. So we can Scry and potentially activate. Although I guess with Yon, we could still easily do both. 
And then our opponent's gonna have to sacrifice Tatsunari to Doom Foretold. Now runs Epiphany, perhaps, the card they searched up earlier. So they'll get to take an extra turn, make a couple of birds. And then they cannot sacrifice anything to Doom Foretold, so that will go off again. So, yeah, that kind of worked out, given the opponent's taking an extra turn. Driven to Despair, ooh. So they could make us discard two cards, potentially. Unless we want to blow up the reactor. Casualties, yeah, that's potentially also what they searched up. As your opponent doesn't bother going for reactor, goes for treasure map. So we can scry and then still sack treasure map. That seems fine. And opportunist looks good on this board. So, yeah, despite our opponents blowing up three of our permanents, it doesn't feel too bad. Can replay on for five. And then if we go Yan, um, I can also play Opportunist, sacrifice Construct to draw with Opportunist, although then we'll be shields down on the reactor. And if possible, I want to keep 4 mana available for it at all times. So, can still play on. I'll just be waiting on the Opportunist until later. Opponent takes it. We're down to 15. So, reactor is getting close. And let's pass. We have to discard two cards right now, just get rid of Bridge and Puzzle Knots. Vraska can go after Reactor, although Reactor can go after Vraska. Opponent goes for Yan instead. So response, make some more treasure. And then our opponent will get a treasure, so they can still despair if they want to. But we've got a reactor on 11, so opponent seems kind of dead. Opponent has to hang back. And uh, puzzle knots two more counters. So we should pretty easily be able to get there. Can sacrifice again, make another 1-1, one, one, get it to 14 counters. So if we get one damage in, opponent should be dead. And uh, can play opportunist too. Opponent takes it. So is there anything we should be playing around here? So I guess we'll pass and let the opponent make the first move. They could start by minusing on the reactor, forcing me to use it, but Putin just pluses. Show no mercy. And then we can maybe wait until our opponent's tapped out to be safe. Underrealm Lich, that's fine. Can take my draw step. And replay Yon. And then, uh, sure, we'll play a Gunjo. Sacrifice a creature for treasure. Draw for opportunists. Reactor keeps ticking up. So we've got seven mana, not quite enough for Karn and to reactor. So, yeah, just play it slow. Alright, now Vraska's gonna minus, so don't think this is gonna work out, sadly. Go upstairs, and then 
I guess we can try and take out the Lich and at least maybe tap it. And we'll see what protection our opponent has in place. Opponent activates Lich. That's promising. Alright, so I guess we got there, so not sure what I was really playing around there, but uh, yeah, there may be some effects that uh, could fizzle the reactor, so better safe than sorry. Okay, so got to see Jan Mardu sacrifice in action, and it's a pretty fun deck. Lots of neat synergies, not too repetitive, so lots of interesting games. So can definitely recommend it if you've got most of the cards for it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.